Hi guys! Today I'm going to be demonstrating this picture that I did of a red panda in pencil crayon. So one of the things that I have learned in working with pencil crayon is that it's a lot easier to do things if you break it down into smaller sections. Before, I would usually work on an entire area all at once, so like say the entire background. If everything's kind of a greenish tone, then I would do the entire background for the whole layer just in one shot. And I would end up getting lost with what I was doing or I would start to feel really tired or burnt out by the end of it because it's such a big section and it takes such a long time to do. But by breaking it down into the smaller sections, I feel like I'm accomplishing more in a smaller period of time. So in that respect, it was a lot easier to do things that way. For the first layer of the background, I am just blocking in the general shapes and colors of where I want everything to go. It's not going to be the exact color that it is going to be in the end, but I just need to know what shape goes where and the basic layout of everything just so I don't get lost with where I'm at. And you'll notice that the very first layer looks a lot lighter than places where I've gone over it a couple times already. And that's just the nature of this medium. If you want to get rid of that crayon-y look that you get with pencil crayon, you just have to do things in a lot more layers. And burn, um, well, before I, I had gotten rid of the crayon -y look by burnishing, but you don't get as much color depth by doing it that way because you can't layer as much. I mean, I'm sure that there are people out there that are able to burnish and have a lot of depth in their color, but they've also had a lot more practice and know what they're doing, so they can plan things out a little bit better. I'm still trying to figure things out, so using the Mona Lisa odorless mineral spirits to blend out the pencil crayon first and then add more layers on top of that. Then if I have a bad layer I can just go over top of it again. I don't have to be committed to whatever I've just put down. As long as I'm not pressing too hard on the paper first. You need to maintain that grain, uh, the, the texture of the paper in order to put more layers on. If you press too hard then you destroy the um, tooth of the paper and then you can't get as many layers. So now that I'm on the third layer of color for the background, I'm starting to sharpen up some of the edges and work on the branches that are in the background. Now for this, the first couple branches, the one right behind the red panda and behind the red panda's head, I had started by going with some more bright and vibrant colors as an undertone because I wanted to see how it would look. I wanted to see if it would have a nice glow and it it did but I thought that it ended up looking too orange especially since I changed the method with the branch that the red panda is standing on. For that one I had started with the darker colors first and then gone over with more neutral tones and I like the look at that better, but then it didn't really match up the, with the ones that I did in the beginning, or well, not in the beginning, but just before that. So I had to come back and try to tone down the orange glowy undertone or whatever that I had achieved the first time around. So I ended up making a lot more work for myself by experimenting on my piece first <laughs> instead of doing it on a scratch piece of paper. But I don't know, you learn as you go. Um, so yeah, I'm getting in the, the darkest areas first and then coming over with the more neutral browns. Um, I use a lot of blue over top of the black in the shadowed areas just to make sure that it's not a really gray, dull color. I want to have other colors in there and make it look not not as flat, I guess, as I would have if I was just using black or gray. So I use, I use a lot of blues and I'll bring in reds and other colors like 
that over top of really dark areas just to make it more or make it have more depth, I guess you could say. Now I'm just getting in the basic shape of the branch. I was starting to feel really impatient. I had been working on this picture for probably 20 hours at this point, and it, it has actually, or it had actually taken me a few months to complete this piece entirely. And I remember back in, I don't know, whenever I started, I said, I'm going to draw a picture of a red panda. And then two months in, and I still haven't even started on the red panda. So I decided to just block in what I needed to for the branch just to get it out of the way. And then I started working on the red panda itself. So for this, I'm just blocking in the um, general color areas for the first layer. My main goal is just to get rid of the white of the paper and get rid of the that, I guess, grainy texture that you have in the background. So that's the main goal with the first layer. I just want basic color, cover up the white, cover up the grainy texture, and then I come back on top with more layers to deepen the color. For the darkest areas of the panda, I'm doing a layer combo of black and then blue and then a magenta color. And then I might add a little bit of green just to pull some color in from the background. But it's usually just those three colors when I'm trying to get my darkest darks. I'll do black and darkest blue that I have and magenta. And as you can see, it actually took quite a few layers just to get that as dark as I needed it to go. And unfortunately for the fur, I wasn't really sure exactly how I was going to attack the, the fur texture. I, I started with my darkest darks because I knew I at least knew what I was doing for that. I could I could get the darkest darks and then, you know, that would take up a whole bunch of time and I didn't have to think about it. But for the lighter colored fur, it was quite a challenge to figure out exactly how I was going to do that. And again, this would be another point when it would be really nice to try this out first instead of experimenting on my paper or on my finished piece. But I don't know. <laughs> you learn as you go, as I said. Um, so with this, I had started by going from light to dark, and that wasn't really working the way that I wanted it to. Um, there was a point when I added some blue color in to get the darker sections of the fur, and then the panda ended up looking spotted. And it was at that point that I was feeling really frustrated and really depressed and I mean, this happens with every piece that I do. I'll get two thirds done and I'll decide that I hate it, that I've wrecked the entire piece. I'll be in full moping mode, lying on the floor, moping to my husband about how I'm going to throw out my picture and he has to console me, and <laughs> make me feel better. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I had gone on to work on the face just to give myself a break. And then I realized, you know what? It's just one bad layer, I can cover it up. So that's what I did here. I decided to try a different method by going darker first or trying to darken everything up a little bit and then coming on top with the whiter or the, the lighter colors for the texture of the fur. And that, that kind of worked. I, I don't think I really had the method down pat yet, but at least for, for this piece, it, it works to, to some extent, so. That's what I did. I, I darkened everything, came on top with the lighter colors to bring out the highlights and the fur. And then I would go back and forth between the red panda and the background, just sharpening up some details and deepening some of the tones and trying to get out any grainy texture that I saw in the background. Um, and then just going over the face and trying to build up the texture without going too dark with the colors. It's, it's really hard to know how dark to go when you're working with really light fur, or white fur in this, in this case. Um, yeah, and then after I have the fur where I want it, I just come back and add the details in the 
tree branch and that's about it. Thanks so much for watching guys. I had a lot of fun despite being very frustrated with this, but it's really nice to finish something you like and be proud of it in the end. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.